Henry Varnum Poor was one of the most prolific and revered artists of the 20th century. A painter, ceramicist, muralist, and architect, Poor was chosen to decorate the Uptown Post Office in Chicago, Illinois. He chose as the subjects of his painted tile murals two iconic 20th century Chicago artists, Carl Sandburg and Louis Sullivan. There would be two murals, one on each side of the post office. Sullivan was to be on one, and Sandberg the other. The initial plan was for Poor to submit his drawings as cartoons and for the judges to evaluate their merit. About an hour outside New York City, been uh, trying to make sure to set up some uh, as many interviews and connections as I can. Um, we get up to New City on Tuesday, possibly an interview Wednesday in the city with the Henry Varnapur expert. Uh, we are recording um, a folk trio who has been kind enough to uh, rehearse some of the songs from uh, Carl Sandburg's American Song Bag. Just Meredith was there for lunch by chance, and we were sitting around talking. And Burgess Buzz, everybody called him, we called him Buzz. Buzz said to me, uh, "What are you going to? You're graduating. What are you going to do?" And I said, "I don't know. I really have no idea." And he said, "Well, why don't you come and work for me? I've got a little film company that I've just started in New York." The other person who lived out there was Bill Malden, who was a dear friend of my father's it is bill was a lovely guy we used to we used to have lunches out behind the house in new city and they always devolved into into uh, shooting contests we had a tree just about the right distance from where everybody sat and ate and drank and when everybody had had enough to drink we get a single shot 22 out and everybody would take pot shots at the tree. And Malden obviously <laughs> had never been a combat soldier. He was no better than anybody else. And, uh, yeah. and Ben Heck used to come up from Nyack to sit with, sit with my father and get calm, as he says in his books, Italy. And so I applied and we went, spent almost two years in Italy where I either observed or worked on films with Rossellini and Jean Renoir and De Sica and uh, Willie Wyler, Roman Holiday. This is the Crow House built by Henry Varnampour and the town acquired it about 10 years or more before I showed up and when they acquired it they shut it up and didn't do anything with it for a decade. So you leave a stone house in the, in the woods in the tree line like this uh, alone it starts to deteriorate so most of the work that I've been doing has been to preserve it and to catch up on the areas where it's leaking and coming apart at the seams and that sort of thing. And uh, it is appropriate we're here at the statue and he does have the guitar over his shoulder even though Carl Sandburg was not known for being a particularly outstanding guitarist uh, nor for having a particularly outstanding voice but he had a great love of music of the American people, the common people Folk music is the, is the music of the common people, and he wanted to document as many of the songs as he could so that they would not be lost. And this was what started the American Song Bag Project. Where we were today, we took the train from Chicago down to Springfield. In the heart of America, the heartland, we went to the Vachel Lindsay house, and it was quite amazing. And then Vachel never stopped reinventing the way poetry was supposed to be experienced. Uh, I mean, his career was born out of vaudeville. So all of his poems are supposed to be experienced with the ears, not the eyes, you know. Good morning, America, how are you? On the Amtrak going to New York City, working on the murals project. Back to Galesburg, Illinois here on Labor Day. And we did more work on the murals project. Back in New York in Grand Central Station, Mobile Way Films on the spot here. 
We're going up to work on the murals documentary. Have to go up to the Upper East Side and do an interview. I'm here in Albany, New York, on the way to New York City to work on the murals. I'm in Washington, D.C., working on the uh, murals project. His name was Harold E. Dixon. And How do you spell that? D I X O N? D I C K S O N. Harold E. Dixon. And, and I don't know how it came about, but he knew Henry Barnum Poor fairly early on in his career. Um, and my grandfather, at that point in his career, helped to promote him, um, get him a little bit well known. He was up in Penn State. Um, Many people talk about Louis Sullivan as being a pioneering modern architect. He would hate being called that. He was all about a process of thinking. Well, you know, again, this whole project seems to have been um, kind of a journey in and of itself. And it's, uh, it's always amazing the, the characters that you meet and uh, the things that you learn about, you know, not only the, the subjects of the, uh, the project, but the, uh, the the places and the other people whose lives uh, are, you know, tangentially associated with uh, people like uh, Sandberg and, and Poor and Sullivan.